In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use the RS-232 Communications Demonstrator program that's been given to you uh, that you can download from eConestoga. So uh, you're going to download rs232-windows.zip and you'll unzip it and bring it to your desktop. Once you have it, you take a look inside, you'll have three files inside that uh, zip file. And what we're going to do, we have a client, we have an interface, and we have the implementation. Now, the client is meant to test, to show you uh, how the interface actually works. One of your jobs this week is to actually go through the program, uh, through the, uh, the Windows Communications API, and basically explain each line of the code. Now, I've, I've added some comments, but your job is going to be to understand how this, uh, how this works. So, first thing we need to do is we're going to take these files and import them into a solution. So, open up uh, Visual Studio Code, or Visual Studio actually. You can use code as well, but um, let's just use Visual Studio. So, create a new project. I'm going to create a console application and hit next. Uh, this is going to be called RS232. Uh, Okay, and then where it's going to be, it's going to be inside. We're going to go to desktop. We're going to go to RS-232 Windows and select this folder. Okay, so this program is going to show, we're going to show that we can both send and receive data between two virtual ports. You can also uh, use your real ports. Like I said before, if you connect a USB to RS-232 adapter, or two of them, uh, to two USB ports on your on your machine, and then you connect the two uh, ports together, the two RS-232 uh, connectors together using a crossover cable, uh, then you'll be able to communicate between the TX and RX pin of the two ports. Anyway, let's let's keep going. So we have our our project name and we have Windows. Okay, so hit hit create. And as the uh, the solution is created, we're going to basically do what we always do here. So uh, we have you can see here that uh, we've created this new folder. Now we don't need this. RS two thirty two CPP is the same name as the folder. It's the, the 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 name of the solution. We just need to know where to put these files. So we can take these and just copy them over to the this folder. And we don't need this RS two thirty two. This is the if you look here. This is just the hello world. Okay. So if we go in here, I'm gonna remove this. I'm actually gonna delete it from the folder as well. Okay, remove it from the from the solution, and what I want to do is I want to I want to add an existing item. I need to add the interface for the RS-232 communications module. So click Add, and then we're going to add the client and the implementation. So existing item, I need the client, which is main. It's our testing client, and we have the implementation for the communications module, and click Add. Okay, so now we have our interface, okay. Our interface is just—it's uh, just very basic. It's just the function prototypes that we're going to use. Okay. There's some sub functions that uh, were written to support. Okay. They support these functions. Uh, we'll discuss these uh, shortly. Uh, but we have our here's our client, and here is our implementation. Actually, what I should do uh, is go in. And you should probably do the same thing. Go in here, copy this, control C, go to here, and what you want to do is just put it right over here. RS2. And this one go C P P. Okay. And this is the implementation. Implementation. Okay. And then click save all. All right. You always want to have these uh, headers. Okay. Anyway, uh, this is these are the, the implementation functions. Your job this week is to study uh, the Windows Communications API. Okay, so we have, um, uh, see this create file comes from 
Windows.h. Okay, so this is uh, uh, this provides uh, the functions okay for serial communications in Windows. Okay, and so we're calling a lot of these functions. These, uh, like we saw before, these are our wrapper functions. So I'll port to port. Uh, we're basically calling the write file. There's write file, there's read file. Okay, these are Windows uh, API functions, and and everything else that I have here is a wrapper. So create file, um, set com parameters. These are, I mean, this is a wrapper to uh, this right here. Set com state, set com timeouts, mem set. Uh, these are all part of the API, and your job is going to be to research and and explain all of these things. I've I've put a, a lot of comments here to help you a little bit. Okay, so so this is where where we are here now. Uh, let's go here. We have to let's save all, and let's take a look. Okay, so once you've downloaded everything, uh, first thing we want to do is I want to just do a, a show you exactly what's happening here. So the this demonstrator program does two things. Okay, it it sets up it sets up uh, basically two virtual ports. Okay, COM six and COM seven. These are the two that uh, uh, were set up as virtual ports. Okay, using COM zero COM. Now, if you're going to use real ports, uh, you have to go into Device Manager. Okay, and you need to uh, determine what those numbers are. Okay, what if you have uh, certain COM ports, you have to uh, determine exactly which number they are. Now, if they are outside of a certain range, if they're greater than 10, then you have to choose them. Uh, there, there's a certain format that you have to, uh, to, to, to follow in order for this naming convention. Okay, so just to show you, uh, if the if the number exceeds ten, okay, what you want to do, I'll show you here. There's there's a formatting here that you want to follow. Uh, if you go into the rs232com.cpp, uh, and you go and you look down here, it'll tell you. There's a comment in here that I, okay, right here. See, create port file again. Your your job is going to be to to look at this API. So if if the COM number is larger than nine, so we're at COM six and seven, then what you need to do in your formatting, okay, if I wanted COM 10, then what I have to do is I need to use this format instead, okay, for the numbers. So just make sure that if you're trying to use something, uh, a COM port that's greater than nine, you have to follow a different format. All right, so, uh, Again, this client, what it's doing is it's setting up, okay, setting up and sending messages from a, a transmitter to a receiver, okay? Uh, so we have two, uh, in this case, in my case here, COM6 and COM7 are virtual ports, okay? And what I'm doing, I'm, I'm setting up, so I have a handle that points to the two the one, one I'm going to use for transmit, the other one I'm going to use for receive. Okay, so I have these are the na the naming. This is how I select the two ports. This is a handle or a, basically a pointer to the specific COM port. Um, basically, the the physical ports are treated like files. Okay, the same way we do file I/O, that's how we're going to treat uh, these ports. So we're writing and reading from uh, when you read and write to a to a port. It, it, it's like reading and writing to a file. Okay, we have uh, communication rates. So this is 9600 baud. Uh, this is how many bits per frame, uh, and this is timeouts. Now you're going to have to study this. This is part of the API. You need to uh, see that this will change. This is how you can change your your bit rate for your communications. Okay, but you have to you have to set this up. Okay, that's going to be part of your job. So anyway, th what does the client do? First of all, uh, the first things it does is it sets up uh, both sides of the com link. So this init port is a wrapper that I've written for you, but you have to, again, figure out what it does. It, it initializes a port and associates uh, a, the, a handle. So hcomrx, okay, it's, it's um, 
de declared here. So we're passing a reference. We do pass by reference for this. So all of these things are going to be are going to be set. So we initialize the port and associate this particular uh, this name, okay, com seven with this handle, okay, and we associate uh, this name com six with hcom tx handle, okay, and this just sets the the communications rate. They have to be the same in order to communicate. Okay, so I have an initialization. I put half a second of sleep in between. You don't really need to do that, but uh, I just put it anyway because it, when it prints out, it, it looks a little bit nicer. I'll, I'll show you what I mean. And then here we have our transmit side. This is uh, this message is going to be written to our transmit buffer. Uh, it's going to be output to that particular port, and then it's going to be written. Uh, is, well, it's going to output. We're going to we're going to send it over the wire. In this case, it's going to be over a virtual wire, uh, and then it's going to be received, okay, by the the um, uh, on the receiving side's buffer, okay. It's going to be received and written to this particular buffer, the message in buffer. So this is a buffer uh, with space for for a message, okay. This is the buffer that we're going to write to the output uh, port and this is the the input input buffer okay that that's read at the receive port okay and then when you're done after the so we, we set up the connection we send we receive at two different ports and then we tear down both sides of the link okay uh, if I go in here I just want to uh, We'll go here for a second. I'm just going to give you a brief overview, but again, your job is going to be to uh, to study these these uh, the functions. So these are wrappers, okay? So init port, it's a wrapper, uh, and it just basically calls all of the sub functions, the setup functions, okay? So create port uh, right here, it basically uh, uses the create file function in order to create uh, a handle. Right or a pointer to that particular resource to that com port, okay. And if there's a problem, it will tell you. So that's create port file. Um, purge port just purges the port once it's been in case there's anything there. And then once you've created it, you need to set the parameters. So you need to set things like the communications rate, how many bits per frame, and any timeouts. And you can study actually the timeout. Uh, in in that section in the set comms set com prep. This is where uh, you're going to have to explain this, but uh, you see, there's a, a a structure DCB. This is the Windows Device Control Block, and it's a struct, and it has things like the 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 baud rate uh, by how many how many bits. Uh, per per frame, if you're using parity, etc. And this is part of your. You're gonna have to study this particular uh, function, okay? And this particular thing. I want you to go and do some research on this. Um, here, th these are the parameters. These are timeouts, okay? So basically, this is something you're gonna have to explain. I want you to study this uh, this struct, okay? And I, I kind of give you some some pointers but I want you to explain it in your own words okay so go through here and just just explain what what this does okay that's that's one of your your jobs here all right so uh, I'll save that okay so I'm gonna demonstrate that this works okay so we're using we have input and output or transmit and receive so if we go here I'm gonna push Push play. It might go on a different screen here. Let me see where it is. Okay, it shows up. Uh, it shows up on a different screen. Okay, so here we go. Oh, what what exactly happened? We had uh, the communications port on the transmit side was opened. Okay, the communications port on the receive side was opened. Okay, and then uh, we start transmitting. Okay, so and then this tells us that transmission was successful. So writing to the transmit port was successful, and then we we were we also successfully read data from the receive port, 16 bytes. So 16 bytes sent, 16 bytes received, and then we look at the receive buffer to see what the receive message was. Okay, so that's that's basically what it does. Now, if you want. Uh, if you want to be able to uh, just send, uh, let's say, 
let's say I want to, and I'm not going to demonstrate because it's pretty simple. If I want to have, uh, you know, two programs, okay, one one is send and one is received, then what I could do is just take make a copy, make a copy of this entire project, and on one, I just comment out. I just comment out the the one I comment out the transmit functions, okay, all the transmit functions, uh, and the other one I, I comment out the receive. So I'll ha I could have two programs, right? Uh, one transmit and one receive, okay, uh, and that's if you if you wanted to have two two different programs to do that. So that that's basically how things are are set up here, okay. All right, so thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, your job is to figure out um, the API, the function calls. So I've written wrappers, and your job is to explain what the actual functions do and why things were set up in this way. Again, your one of the things you really want to study is this this function right here, the com parameters. Okay, because this sets timeouts. You want to explain what is the timeout, why does it exist. Um, you know what? What are the, the what does this read interval timeout, uh, total timeout, etc. What what is happening here? Okay, all right. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Uh, for for anyway the Windows side of things, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the video.